Hi, welcome to ChemTube channel. I'm Jeku Wong. In this video, we are going to discuss the Malacca Trier Pepper 2. Let's start. First, we look into the section A, the egg structure questions. The table shows uh, three elements with their proton number and nucleon number. Okay, so oxygen, magnesium, and lithium. So, what is the meaning of nucleon number? Okay, so nucleon number is this one. Okay, so you can see the uh, numbers, uh, the value will be bigger than the proton number. So, what is the meaning of the nucleon number? So, it's a total or the sum of the number of proton and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. Okay, it's the total or the sum. Now, um, Based on the table, write the standard representation for each of the elements for oxygen, magnesium, and lithium. So here, the standard representation okay, for the oxygen will okay, be O. Okay. O is the name of the uh, elements. Then 16 is a nuclear number. Then 8 will be proton number. For magnesium, okay, nuclear number is 24. Then the proton number is 12. For lithium, Cli, then 7 nuclear number, 3 proton number. Okay. Next, state one subatomic particles present in the nucleus of the lithium atom. Okay. So it has a proton or actually neutron also can. They are the uh, subatomic particles in the nucleus. Now, question number two In a school science week competition, you are asked to identify the compound X in a sample of banana flavor culture drinks. The following information is provided to help you. Okay, so the simplest mole ratio carbon is 7, hydrogen is 14, or is 2. Okay, so what is the meaning of empirical formula? So, empirical formula refer to the Formula that shows the simplest ratio, uh, simplest ratio of the number of atoms for each element in the compound. Okay, now state the empirical formula for compound X. So it's C7H14O2 uh, because it cannot be simplified anymore. Okay, B. Combustion of the propane gas C3H8 in excess oxygen molecule produce the water and carbon dioxide. So the chemical equation for the reaction as follower. Okay, so balance the chemical equation by identifying the x by z. Okay, so to solve this question, okay, or to balance the equation, okay, first one we need to settle the uh, carbon first. Okay, so here C is 3. Okay, so C3, so meaning that this one carbon times 3. Okay, second one we solve the hydrogen. So hydrogen is eight hydrogen here. So this one two, so meaning that this one is four. Okay. Then finally we have to solve the O. Okay, O. So here three times two is six. Six plus four is ten. So ten meaning that finally we need to determine the oxygen. So five times two is ten. Okay, so the answer B x be 5, y is 3, z is 4. Okay, question number 3. Diagram shows a graph of volume of gas released against time for the reaction between the calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Okay, so time taken, and then this is volume of acid. Eh? So actually, you, if you can see it uh, properly, so after 240 seconds, the rate of reaction i think should be stopped already huh? uh, the reaction is stopped already okay so it's 45 cubic centimeter so what is the meaning of a rate of reaction is a change or increase in the volume of carbon dioxide gas collected per unit time huh? okay per unit time over the time huh? now step one observable changes in this experiment can be used to determine the rate of reaction so Thing will be the same as the meaning to sound. So it's the volume of gas collected okay, over the time. So we can see. Okay, now calculate the overall average rate of reaction. So overall, 
So it's the volume divided by the time. Okay, so it's 45 cubic centimeter divided by 240. So you get 0 0.188 cubic centimeter per second. Okay, we classify the following reaction into fast reaction and slow reaction in the table below. Okay, first one, electric cell uh, reaction, uh, electric cell reaction, fireworks, uh, rock erosion, and then fermentation. So the first reaction will be electric cells and a reaction, another one will be fireworks. Uh. Then the slow reaction, uh, rocks, rock erosion, okay, and then fermentation. Okay, these two reactions are very slow. Okay. Question number four. Diagram shows uh, elements in the periodic table. Huh? So in which group in the periodic table chlorine will locate? So if we look into the chlorine, proton number is 17. So electron arrangement is 2, 8, 7, right? 2, 8, 7. So it is in group 17, huh? group 17. Okay, because of it has 7 valence electrons. B, write the electron arrangement for the potassium atom, uh, atom, not ions. Uh, so, potassium atoms, 19 protons, so it'll be 2, 8, 8, 1. Okay, yeah, 2, 8, 8, 1. Now, uh, sodium and potassium elements react with water to produce a metal hydroxide solution and the hydrogen gas. So, based on the statement, write the chemical equation for the potassium with water. So, potassium is a metal, right? Metal react with water. So it produces metal hydroxide, that is a potassium hydroxide solution, and then hydrogen gas. Huh? So this is a chemical equation. I need to balance the chemical equation. Yes, this one times two, times two, this one times two. Okay. Now, a piece of burning sodium is placed quickly into a gas jar containing oxygen gas. So step up the observation for the reaction. So the sodium will react with the oxygen so you form it burns with a yellow flame yellow flame okay so then the uh, for compound form could be ionic ionic compound okay uh, because sodium metal oxygen non-metal okay draw the electron arrangement for the compound d so it's a uh, Sodium oxide, sodium oxide. So sodium is two eight one lost one electrons. Oxygen gain two electrons, so two negative. So it gain two electrons from two sodium atoms. Sodium atoms will uh, will lost one electron each to the uh, oxide. Okay, oxygen. Then it will form the oxide ions. They are attracted by the strong electrostatic force. Question number five diagram shows that ginger uh, plant. Ginger can be used to as a traditional mixer. So which of the part PQR is used as a main source of the mix uh, mixer? So what is your opinion? Okay, yeah, definitely is the uh, R, right? Okay, R is the uh, main source, okay, for the Ginger. Okay, now what illness can be treated using the ginger? Okay, release the wing in the body. Okay, now how the ginger used to treat the illness? So boil the R portion in and drain it to drink. Huh? Okay, now table shows the function of three types of medicine. Huh? So prevent pants. So the type of medicine should be analgesic, right? Okay. Kill or prevent the reproduction of the bacteria. So this one will be antimicrobials. Change in, in the emotion and behavior of the patient. So it should be psychotic medicine. <clears throat> now a patient treated by medicine of type OI must be com must complete all the supply given by the doctor in order to make sure all the bacteria are killed. What will happen if not all the bacteria are killed? What do you think? So the bacteria are more immune to the antibiotics, right? Then need a higher dose for further treatment in future. Huh? Okay, question number six. 
process uh, diagram 6 shows the conversion of one built, in, uh, built one in to hydrocarbon Y through the process X at 180 degrees Celsius with the presence of nickel as a catalyst. So here you can see uh, initially it has a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, after the reaction will be no more. So this one is called hydrogenation, right? Okay, so it uses the nickel as the catalyst. Okay, so what is the process Y? Uh, process X, so you see hydrogenation no? or addition of hydrogen. So write the chemical equation to represent the process X. So it will be C4H8 plus H2. So it produces C4H10, is the butane. Okay. Now 29 grams of hydrocarbon Y burn completely in oxygen. In the, follow the equation below. Uh. Now, calculate the mass of the carbon dioxide gas release. So this one is the one you need to calculate what is the mass. Okay. So first we need to calculate the uh, number of mole for the hydrocarbon Y, C4H10. Okay. So mass is 29. So we can use the mole over molar mass. Okay. So 29 over the uh, molar mass is 0 0.5 mole. Okay. So next we need to look into the mole ratio. So one mole of uh, butane uh, produce four moles of uh, carbon dioxide. So meaning that if 0 0.5 mole will be times 4 will be 2 more per cubic decimeter. Okay, so meaning that the, if the mass, okay, mass of the carbon dioxide, so we can calculate uh, more times the molar mass for the carbon dioxide, so you get is 88 gram. Okay, 88 gram. Now, calculate the percentage of carbon per molecule between spilled one in and hydrocarbon Y, state which will produce the highest sooner. Okay, so relative atomic gas uh, mass given C, carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen is given. So first we need to calculate for the percentage of carbon in butene. Okay, so it is uh, the mass of the carbon. Okay, uh, C4, right? Okay, C4. So this one we write after C4, H8. So C, there are 4. So 12 times 4 over the overall C4 H8 so times 100 percent so it's 85.71 percent okay then hydrocarbon Y actually is C4 H10 right so uh, carbon also the same as the butene also 4 okay but the uh, overall C4 H10 uh, C4 H10 uh, sorry okay mm. so it will be uh, times 100%, so it's 82.76%. So if we compare the percentage of carbon, so this one is higher. So meaning that butene will produce more sooner than the hydrocarbon Y. Okay, so three marks. In question number seven, diagram shows apparatus to determine the heat of displacement. So we use the zinc powder put into the carbon 2 sulfate solution. Huh? State the meaning of the heat of displacement. Okay, so heat of displacement is the heat change okay, or release huh? when one mole of copper here is displaced from carbon 2 sulfate solution by by what? By zinc because zinc is more electropositive than uh, copper. Okay, give a reason why polystyrene cup is used in the uh, in this experiment, okay, why not using the beaker? Because it is heat insulator, or it can reduce the heat loss to surrounding. Okay, uh, reject, prevent. Uh, it cannot prevent the heat loss, uh, so it must be reduced on it. Now, thermal chemical equation shows uh, displacement reaction. Uh, so the displacement reaction. Heat of displacement is negative 210 kJ per mole. So it is exothermic. Negative, so it shows it is exothermic. So first we calculate the number of mole. Use the MV over 1000. So 0 0.2 times 50 over 1000. So it's 0 0.01 mole. Okay, now heat release during the reaction. So we can use the delta H equals to Q over the mole. Okay, so given to us the Delta H is 210, right? So Q 
over the more more is 0.01 so q is 2.1 kilo joule uh, kilo joule okay now can you calculate the heat change so we know already the q is 2.1 2 kilo joule uh, so we change to joule first times 1000 is 200 uh, 2100 joule equals to the m m is 50 then c is 4.2 uh, 4.2 Okay. Then theta, you, you, you need to find the change in temperature. So you can see theta is 10 degrees Celsius. Now the, the experiment uh, is repeated using the magnesium powder to replace to replace the zinc powder. The volume of, and concentration of carbon to sulfate solution used are remain the same. So predict the heat of displacement. So what do you think? Be higher the same or lower should be higher or huh? more than 210 kJ per mole or higher or increase huh? okay why give a reason for your answer because magnesium is more electropositive than zinc or you can mention magnesium is higher than zinc in the electrochemical series or the distance between magnesium and copper is further than zinc and copper in the electrochemical series so that's why the heat of displacement is higher. Now draw the energy level diagrams for the reaction. So this energy level diagram, we should know it is an exothermic reaction. Huh? So what are the inform, in, important uh, things that you need to include in the energy level diagrams? So first, you have to level the energy level diagrams. Any energy yeah, words, and then after that is exo, right? Okay, then the delta H need to be include and then you can write the chemical equation or the ionic equation. Okay, you choose one uh, to be insert into your energy level diagram. So two marks. Now question number eight. Okay, a diagram shows the apparatus to for two set of experiment to re in investigate the redox reaction. Huh? So here is bromine water. And then this one is iron 2 sulfate solution. Okay, use the carbon as an electron huh, for this set one. Sulfate acid as an electrolyte. Then this one, the magnesium ribbon put into the iron 2 sulfate solution. For set two, will be displacement reaction. Huh? Okay, so what does it mean by redox reaction? So redox reaction, you can look into here. Red means reduction, or X is oxidation. Meaning that it's a reaction that oxidation and reduction occur simultaneously. Okay. Now, state the function of bromine water and iron 2 sulfate in the set 1. So here bromine, we know that bromine will change to bromide, right? Okay. So it will undergo uh, reduction. So it's an oxidizing agent. Okay. Then the other one, iron 3 sulfate, will be opposite one. So it's oxid oxidizing agent, uh, oxidizing agent. Okay, normally we don't write oxidation agent. It will be oxidizing agent. Okay. Then the other one will be reducing agent. Uh, they will undergo oxidation. Okay. Now, um, after fifteen minutes, the iron two sulfate solution in set one change color from pale, uh, green to brown. But in set 2, it changed from green to colors. A gray solid is formed at the base of the beaker in set 2. Okay. Uh, complete the table. Explain the observation. Okay. So first, we need to look into the set 1. So the uh, oxidation number will be plus 2 to plus 3. Yeah? Okay. Plus 2 to plus 3. Okay. The Half equation will be iron 2, it will change to iron 3. Yeah? So this one is undergoes oxidation. Okay. Uh, then for set 2, uh, actually it, the iron 2 here, it will change to iron metal. Okay. Be plus 2 to 0. Okay. Plus 2 to 0. So the, uh, as, uh, the half equation it will be iron 2. Okay, you gain electrons to form the iron metal. So this one is undergoes reduction, uh, reduction. Okay.
Okay, because it pair with the magnesium, which is a, a reducing agent. So it here becomes the oxidizing agent. Okay, now another redox reaction is carried out to investigate the effect of metal X on the rusting of iron. Okay, it shows the apparatus. Uh. Okay, so iron nail coil with metal X. Uh. So it, the agar solution with potassium hexacenoferrate 3. So this fun. Uh, this solution actually used to detect the iron to ions. Uh, okay, if the iron is rust, so you produce iron to ions. Okay, then the potassium hexacenoferrate three you will shows the dark blue color. Okay, uh, dark blue spot now or precipitate. Okay, so if no dark blue coloration, meaning that it uh, the iron is not rusting okay now after three days the result shows the blue spots meaning that okay iron 2 ions is present right okay so suggest a suitable uh, metal x so for the iron it should be contact with the uh, lower uh, lower position or less electro positive metal than the iron okay so for example like copper uh, Okay, thin, uh, okay, uh, only any metal less electropositive than iron. Uh. Okay, explain your observation. Okay, so X is less electropositive than iron. So iron is oxidized, uh, or iron to ions is formed. Okay, next we are going to look into the essay question. Uh, essay question, uh, section B. Two essay question, choose one to be answered. Question number nine. Diagram nine point one shows the apparatus for the for a simple chemical cell. Huh? So yeah, it is using the copper electrons and then the iron electrons. Okay, and using the salt bridge. Huh? So inside the electrolyte is copper two nitrate solution, and then this is iron two nitrate solution. Okay, uh, for this question, huh, uh, you need to add in the E naught value. Okay, for the Iron is zero, negative 0 0.44 volt, and then for the copper is positive 0 0.34. Okay, so actually to determine the negative terminal or the N naught uh, is very simple. It's just looking to the value of the E naught. So if here is more negative, so meaning that this one becomes a negative terminal or A naught, it undergoes oxidation. So remember oxidation. It will lost electrons, huh? lost electrons. So lost electrons meaning that this equation it will be more to the left. Okay, more to the left. Then if here positive, meaning that this one will be the cathode. Huh? Okay, so undergoes reduction. Okay, gain electrons. So meaning that uh, this one is more to the right. Okay. So, okay, uh, based on the Diagram, okay, state the positive terminal and the negative terminal. And then write the cell notation and then calculate the voltage of the cell for max. So first is a positive terminal, it's a copper electrons. Negative terminal is iron or ferrum electrons. Then cell notation, we follow these rules actually. So we write the anode first, anode electrodes, slash electrolytes, okay. And double stage shows it is a salt bridge or the porous pot, and then the cathode electrolyte, and then cathode electrodes. Okay, so here we know already. So the anode will be iron, right? Okay, so it's iron metal, iron electrode, the electrolyte, iron two ions. Concentration is one more per cubic decimeter. Huh? Double, double line, then copper uh, electrolyte, okay, and then the copper metal. Okay, so this is a cell notation. Okay, next is the uh, enoch cell, right? So it will be the cathode minus the enoch. So cathode is uh, plus positive 0 0.34. Then minus the enoch will be negative 0 0.44. So negative, negative become positive. So total is positive 0 0.78 volt. 
Next question. The experiment is repeated by using a pair of silver electrodes and then the magnesium electrodes uh, with aqueous solution containing the metal ions respectively. So, uh, table shows the standard electro potential for magnesium, silver and then the hydrogen. Uh. So, if we look into the electrodes here, so uh, for magnesium is negative, more negative. So, this one, uh, we know it is an anode. No? Okay, anode is a, a negative terminal. Okay, so it undergoes oxidation. So, the more positive would become the cathode. So, this, this is a positive terminal. Huh? Okay, now, okay, observation at the positive terminal. So, if positive here, we inside the electrolyte, we have uh, silver, right? We have silver ions, we have uh, hydrogen ions. So, uh, silver is more positive. So, it will be selectively discharged. Huh? Okay, selectively discharged. So, meaning that uh, it will undergo reduction. So it will go to positive. Okay. So meaning that what is observation? So what can you see here is that silver is a uh, silvery solid is formed. Okay. Yeah. So at the positive, silver electrode becomes thicker or silvery solid is deposited. Also can. Okay. Meanwhile, for the anode here, anode it will move to the neck, uh, more to the left. Okay, because it undergoes oxidation, so lost two electrons, uh, lost two electrons. So meaning that, okay, magnesium electrodes becomes thinner, okay, thinner because it ionizes. Okay, next, write the half equation oxidation and reduction for this experiment. Okay, so half equation for oxidation, so magnesium lost two electrons, uh, forms a, uh, loss forms a magnesium ions for reduction. Okay, so uh, for this one, the magnesium atom release two electrons to form some magnesium ions. Uh. For the reduction, silver ions under, uh, undergoes reduction. Uh, so gain electrons forms a silver metal. Okay, so silver ions receive one electron to form the silver atom. Okay. You can see, diagram shows the apparatus to conduct electrolysis of concentrated potassium iodide solution using the carbon electrodes. So here, the electrolyte use is concentrated uh, potassium iodide. So iodide solution, if it is concentrated, it will be selectively discharged at the k top later. Oh. So inside here, we look into the diagrams here. So potassium iodide solution, it contains of potassium ions. And then the iodide ions, okay, then hydrogen ions, and then hydroxide ions, okay. Mm. So, uh, at the cathode here, okay, cathode is uh, negative terminal, and then positive terminal, A0, okay. So, at A0 here, okay, at A0, uh, okay, uh, the iodide ions will be selectively discharged because of concentrated. Uh, concentration of the iodide ions is higher okay so it will selectively discharge okay for the uh, cathode the hydrogen ions will be selectively discharged huh? oh. okay so given to us the uh, standard electrode potential so i have a look here potassium and the hydrogen so these two you can see the uh, hydrogen is more positive okay more positive will be selectively discharged Okay, huh? and then this one uh, ion type will be selectively discharged because of concentration is higher okay now uh, explain the reaction that occur at the end not a cathode and then your explanation should include the following aspect okay ion selectively discharge reason why the ions is selectively discharged half equation observation and then the product so 10 marks here so we look into one by one Okay, for A0, what happened? Iodide ions is selectively to be discharged. Why? Because the concentration of iodide ions is higher than hydroxide ions in the electrolyte solution. So, iodide ions will lose electrons. Okay, because uh, A0 will occur the oxidation re reduction. So, lost two electrons to form the iodine. So, what is the observation? 
ground solution is produced, <coughs> the product is iodine. Okay, product. Meanwhile, at the cathode here, okay, and uh, hydrogen ions are selectively to be discharged. Okay, why? Because the inner value of hydrogen ions is less negative or more positive right? than inner value for the uh, potassium ions. Okay, then the hydrogen ions gain electrons uh, to form hydrogen gas. So observation, colorless bubble gas release products is hydrogen gas. Okay, yeah. So you just remember, N0 undergoes oxidation. And then cathode undergoes reduction. Okay, so you, you always can double check. So lost electrons, okay, uh, cathode gain electrons. Okay, okay, diagram 10 shows the electron arrangement of XY compound. Huh? So you can see if it is positive and negative, so this one should be the ionic compound. Okay, so, um, X, X atom, uh, it has lost two electrons, uh, lost two electrons, so it forms uh, two positive ions. Uh, and Y, two negative, meaning that it gained two electrons already. Okay, so the electron arrangement is initially should be two, eight, two, uh, okay, for X, because it will lost the two electrons. So for Y, it will be two, six, it gained two electrons to form the two negative. So based on the diagram, explain the position of element who uh, should be element x huh? okay in the periodic table <coughs> five marks so first we write the electron arrangement is 282 huh? for x so it has two valence electrons so where is it it is in a group two then for period it has three occupied electron shells then x it is in period three so group two period three now uh, diagram shows the chemical symbol represent three elements P, Q, R. These letters are not the actual symbol of the elements in the periodic table. So using the uh, information, explain the formation formed from the P and Q. Okay, P and Q. Okay, draw the electron arrangement of the compound. So five marks. So. Electron arrangement of atom P is 2, 4, and Q is 1. So, uh, atom P contribute 4 electrons to be shared with 4 atoms of Q. So, each atom of Q contribute 1 electron to be shared with atom of P. Yeah? So, we can say 1 atom of P share 4 pairs of electrons with 4 atoms of Q to form 4 covalent bond. So, atom P has achieved standard octet electron arrangement and atom Q achieve standard duplet electron arrangement. So the covalent compound of PQ4 is formed. So electron arrangement, the diagram should be like this. Eh? So there are forms of four pairs of covalent bond. Okay, four pairs of electrons and four covalent bonds here. Yeah? Okay. Next diagram shows the apparatus and observation obtained from the experiment conduct to study the electrical conductivity and melting point between the ionic and covalent bond, uh, covalent compound. So ionic compound here will be led to bromide, no? and then covalent will be naphthalene. So let's see, led to bromide in the solid state, the bulk is not light up, but in the molten, yes, it will light up. For naphthalene, solid, no, does not light up, molten also not light up. Okay, so now, based on your answer, observation, state the difference observation in terms of electrical conductivity and the melting point. Eh? Okay, explain your answer. So, K marks. First, we look into the electrical conductivity. Eh? Okay, so, like to bromide, it can conduct electricity in molten or aqueous state only. Eh? In solid state, cannot. Okay, so in molten, like to bromide, it contains freely moving ions. And the, the ions cannot move freely in a solid state. Huh? So naphthalene, it cannot conduct electricity in solid or molten state. Why? Because it contains the neutral molecules only. No freely moving ions. Okay. 
Meanwhile, for the melting point, melting point of magnesium chloride is higher than the naphthalene, okay, because it has a strong electrostatic force between ions. Okay, more heat energy is needed to overcome the force, and then naphthalene it has a weak van der Waals force, so a little heat energy is needed to overcome the force. Okay, I think this one should be the uh, black two bromide, yeah, black two bromide. Okay, I'm typing error. Now under section C. Okay, one essay question. Okay, it is a compulsory question. The grain shows the apparatus to investigate the chemical properties of acid using the excess acid Y. Okay, so acid Y is excess. Okay, and then zinc P says that. Okay, so zinc react with the acid, but here acid is excess. So we can measure the uh, mass of the zinc over the time okay and then we also can see the volume of gas release per unit time to calculate the back of reaction okay now acid Y uses a monoprotic strong acid okay now suggest uh, acid Y so monoprotic strong acid it can be hydrochloric acid or nitric acid identify the gas release so you react with the hydrogen uh, it react with the acid with the metal, so it will form some hydrogen gas. Okay, hydrogen gas. Now, write the chemical equation for the reaction between the acid Y with the zinc. State the volume of gas release. Okay. Now, first we write the equation first. So, let's say we use the hydrochloric acid where we zinc, produce a zinc chloride and uh, hydrogen gas. So, what is the volume of gas release? Okay, so volume of gas release. We can calculate the number of mole okay, for hydrogen. Huh? So 0 0.024 divided by 24. So 0 0.001. Okay, this volume is get from the syringe. Huh? Okay, next, the mass of the zinc huh? because the ratio is 1 to 1. So more times the molar mass is 0 0.06 final gram. Okay, now B. Diagram shows a how mixture of two different salt, <coughs> salt S and Y, eh? is separated. Both uh, salt contains the same cations. Salt X is soluble, salt Y is insoluble in water. Okay, so mixture of salt X and Y, add water and filter, solution of X and solution insoluble of X, Y, eh? salt Y. Okay, now in... Okay, it's tested with another test. <clears throat> if X add in few drops of potassium iodide solution, so you form a yellow precipitate. So it means that we must know. So this one contains the lead two ions. Huh? And then add in sulfuric acid and iron two sulfate, add concentrated sulfuric acid slowly. So it forms a brown ring. So meaning that this one we know it is a nitrate ion. So this one will be lead two nitrate. No? Okay. Now why? You heat it, uh, and gas release is tested with lime water. So brown residue turns yellow when cool. Huh? Okay, and then lime water turns cloudy, so it contains a carbon dioxide. Okay, mm. so meaning that it will, it should be, let me see. Huh? Okay, same cations, meaning that this one also, a lead. Huh? Let this one to be carbonate. Okay. Uh, let carbonate is insoluble, correct? Then let nitrate is soluble. Okay. Now based on the table, what is the cations for both sorts? So it should be let two ions. So I identify salt X should be let two nitrate. So Y should be let two carbonate. Okay, residue B will be let two oxide. Okay. Now set the gas release will be carbon dioxide. Okay, so five marks. Now see, a beverage company has mark marketed two different types of citrus flavor drinks, lemonade and orange net. That contains citric acid, uh, as shown uh, in the diagram. So citric acid is the type of acid that can be found in citrus fruit. Okay, so lemonade 
set, uh, contains citric acid from lemon fruit. Uh, this one, orange net, contains citric acid from orange fruit. Okay, it's two different uh, fruits here. Now, uh, the concentration of citric acid can be determined using the potassium hydroxide solution and, or any other suitable chemicals. Uh. Now, plan an investigation to show which of the two drinks contains a higher concentration of sulfuric, uh, citric acid. Include the conclusion that could be obtained. So, your, you can use a common laboratory apparatus and materials for your planning. So, eight marks here. Okay. So, first, we can fill a bit, use a uh, acid based titration. Okay. So, we can fill a burette with beverage ale. Okay. Then, pour 25 cubic centimeter of potassium hydroxide solution into a conical flask. Uh, and a few drops of phenolphthalein into the potassium hydroxide solution. Then we start the titration. Titrate the beverage A into the conical flask. Then stop the color change when the pin turns to colorless. Then we can record the volume of the beverage A used to neutralize the potassium hydroxide. Then repeat one to six. Step one to six by replacing the beverage A to beverage B. So we can see the beverage with higher uh, citric acid concentration uh, it yields a lower volume of acid to react with the potassium hydroxide because its concentration is higher so it needs less or uh, lower volume okay uh, so this is first uh, sample okay you can use the acid base saturation another one you can use a uh, metal or metal carbonate for 25 cubic centimeter of beverage A into a conical blast. Then add in 5 grams of magnesium or calcium carbonate into the um, conical flask. Okay. Then collect the gas release using a syringe until no more gas produced. Okay. Then record the volume of gas release. Then repeat one step 1 to 4 by replacing the beverage A2 with the beverage B. Then beverage with a higher concentration of citric acid it will release more volume of gas. Huh? Uh, so by using these two uh, methods, we can actually can determine the concentration of the uh, hydrogen ions or the acid inside of beverage A or B. Okay. So that's all for this video. Okay. Uh, I hope it helped you to prepare yourself uh, in your SPM exam. Okay, all the best to all of you. Thank you.